Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team Minus 365. In today's episode, I'm recurring all the updates for Microsoft in March of 2022. If you followed up with my updates in the past, you know I focused in on what's relevant to the MSP space, blocking out all the noise from the 100 or so announcements that come from them each month. Getting into it here though, I'm going to start off with Microsoft Teams as I usually do. This new feature is called Workflows. It's being introduced in the app section of Microsoft Teams. This is using Power Automate on the back end to help you automate common repetitive tasks. This has been around for a while. They're just probably introducing it here to drive more adoption into Power Automate and the back end technology that exists there. So many of you will already start to see this as it is supposed to be in market by the end of March. The next one here is about this Teams device store being introduced into the Teams Admin Center. So this is where you can discover Teams devices and procure them directly from within a single tenant. This may be controversial to you if you're purchasing this from a different provider today, or you may be able to leverage this and just resell that to the customer as well too. This all depends on what you're marketing these things up for and your pricing model along, but I figured it was good to introduce this just so you could check this out within that catalog exposure. That'll be in there early April. Next one here for Teams, this is a casting feature that they're introducing for Teams devices so that users can cast to the Teams device directly from the desktop app. And it's right here under this drop down that you see where you have the cast option. This will be coming in late March and be introduced in early April. Shifting into Exchange here, this first one is about dynamic group distribution. Dynamic groups have traditionally had long latency just because they're looking up all the, the members on the fly as that email is being sent versus storing that information and having a little bit more intelligence behind that as well. So they're updating this functionality and they're really trying to give you more flexibility on seeing those members of a dynamic group within the actual experience of trying to send an email before you do so you have a little bit more compliance control as well in case you wanted to remove a couple of those members. This will happen in early April, be complete by mid-April. Shifting into the last section here, which is the admin section. This first one has some end user impact. I don't think it's large, but they're basically going to set this setting here on by default, which is combining the registration for both MFA and self-service password reset. So by doing so, you know, you're reducing confusion around having to do this multiple times if you were to set up MFA, then set up self-service password reset afterwards where they're asked to put in things like their phone and their email as secondary methods of recovery. Um, so this is combining the experience. I think a good piece to note here that would be more of my concern, it's not going to trigger MFA for users that don't have it today to cause a, a larger disruptive uh, nature to what we're trying to roll out here. This is simply enabling this for users who haven't registered yet so they can do both at the same time. The main thing is that they're turning it on in all tenants starting in October and that will be complete into January. So there will be some end user impact. I'll have some uh, docs on my blog that document kind of what's going on here and what the end user sees. Which you could always test this out too by going into the settings section and I'll link the path actually to get here so you guys can test it out fully to see what the end user will see. Just make sure you give out appropriate notifications as well. Next one here is related to newcomers. Do this every month now, right? Related to newcomers. This one was good though, as far as the good news. Many of you probably know this already, but they extended their calendar window for cancellations and decrements into the seven calendar days versus the 72 hour window we had before. It still works in a 365 calendar day year, so there's no relief for weekends or holidays or anything like that but it does um, encompass all commitment terms, even monthly. So every subscription you have might have a disparate renewal date, and that renewal date is when your seven day window starts where you can either make decrements or cancel that subscription. Last one here is related to nonprofit pricing. If you don't have any nonprofit customers, this won't be applicable, but just some pricing updates coming in September of this year, so pretty far out. But just want to get ahead of those conversations, obviously, to your customers who have nonprofit licenses in the E-level suite here, as well as business premium. Key asterisk, though, it will not affect offers available as a grant if you have that. And this price increase will apply globally. I have USD prices up here, but this will be an increase that's applied across the board um, globally as well. So again, September 1st is when those changes will take effect. 
but uh, that is something that you probably want to start those conversations at least with your customers today. That's all the updates I want to cover in today's episode here. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. Otherwise, like or subscribe if you always want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.